Okay then, so the engine is in. I haven't screwed it in or bolted it in or anything because we're going to give it a bit of a wash and if we need to, we can always hook it out again. But it's very straightforward, it drops in. So make sure these slide bars are on. And also we've put on the front part here with the oil cooler itself. Um, it's going to go underneath here. And we've got the reservoir as well, which is all going to go underneath once we're all finished with it. So what we're going to do, we're going to give it a wash, same as we did with the cockpit. So all we're going to do is Make sure your airbrush is clean and not blowing green paint like this is doing. So we just make sure we've got a good rinse through. Okay, can we add a little bit? And then all we're gonna do exactly the same way as I said. So we're gonna go thinners in first. I'm not gonna need masses amounts here, but we're just trying to dirty this up. Okay, and then all we're gonna do is take a brush full of paint into the thinners. Now you could brush this on, but the thing is I find when you brush it on, it's just a little bit thicker, just put a tiny bit more thinners in there. Um, when you brush it on, I tend to find you get little brush marks and things like that. The other thing you could do if you wanted to, you could put down a clear coat to protect any work you're doing now, which could be a good idea. Um, I'll let you know in a minute when this goes wrong. There we go, we're making sure that's through, and it is, so all we do, I just give this a bit of a blow over and because it's going on to flat it should stick and dry quite quickly but hopefully this will just give us a bit of an oily look and say just the same as we did the cockpit. So what I'm going to do is not blow this um, like we do some of them obviously we come along then and blow to dry it off but we want this to dry it all very natural and everything else so we're just making sure we've got plenty down that rear bulkhead, plenty around the front and we're all fine. So I'm quite happy with that so what we're going to do is very carefully stick this over here which I suppose in a good thing what we could do is actually attach this temporary to the front of the plane because all this will do is keep it off the ground just like that. So there we go, that's fitted in there on the close-up, looking quite nice. Now we're going to let that dry off and if it needs it we can come back as we've done with the others and give it another coat and so forth and so on like that. So what I'm going to do now is have a quick clear up because we're getting a bit sort of close to the middle um, and then we can carry on. Okay so we've moved on a little bit now, um, what we've actually done we've put the framework um, that goes around the out part of the engine here um, which is sort of the actual holds the manifold on and things like that. We've put on the exhausts on there as well now, funny one with that obviously the colouring um, is personal choice. Um, Look at 100 photos, you'll get 100 different colours off of this. So what I actually did was use um, X34, which is like a metallic um, brown colour uh, by Tamiya, and did that and added a little bit of black and a little bit of silver and ended up with this colour. So I'm quite happy with that. But that's the actual engine work done. It's a very nice piece, very nicely detailed. And then over here, what happens is, this one is just going to fit straight in and locks in the front and gives you a very, very nice engine. Um, on there just like that. On the underside of the actual engine we've obviously we've inserted the radiator which we put on and we've got this little armour plate underneath here and then what happens is we've got here obviously depending if you're doing the C version or the A version or the B version um, we've got the little air scoop here which is the uh, air intake which takes it into the intercooler and by pushing that in there it locks this actual engine now in place and it's a nice thing. I wouldn't glue that. If you ever wanted to take the front off, change the engine perhaps, um, it's a nice little push fit. It's on rubber grommet so you can take it on and off, which is quite a nice little touch there. But there we go, that fixes the engine on there. Same thing, it had just the same airbrush to wash onto it, left it, let it totally dry, come back to it a bit later on. But that puts that on very nicely done. Um, engine itself, we've got to put a little bit of filler just down here. Um, there's a little, uh, which is uh, a little hatch, which needs filling on this particular version. Put a little bit of a lump and a bump. Check your references as you go through these. Then obviously we've got a little magnet goes on the inside. Same with the others. Um, underneath the plate, um, this is the, the belly one uh, for the cowling. Uh, obviously two little metal plates and what that enables this to do is that it comes along and obviously we've got the magnets in here and then this is going to magnetise and clicks on and it's actually magnetic and stays in place which is quite a nice little touch. So we have that one on like that and then obviously we've got one goes on the top, the cowling at the top and then obviously we've got a magnet that went in here and then this will push fit and then hopefully we'll sit all in and give you a nice engine fit just like that which is lovely for demonstration and then obviously all you're going to do is come along 
and then very carefully you sort of wiggle this forward okay and then it clicks backwards and that actually will bring your engine sections together just like that and then what happens is the actual front part we've got a rubber grommet in here which is going to go in the propeller section and then that is going to fit all along the front like this and you've got these little tabs which just stick out a little bit and then when you push it on which is a nice little touch if we get this one on um, it actually holds all the panels in place so you can't take the panels off unless you take the prop cover uh, the actual front off to get to them but that's a lovely little touch um, now you could glue as I said the engine in there but I'm not going to in case we want to demonstrate this in various open uh, states and things so you could have it if you wanted to Let's see just get this one off opened up just like this leave the belly plate on or as I say you can take the belly plate off because it's just magnetic so it's a nice nice little touch there so also we put the prop together there again very very straightforward that's going to go in and then the prop section itself, that's just going to come along here, drops down onto here, then obviously we've got the prop case going to go on the front, but you can have it displayed open or shut. They're very straight, straightforward and that's why I haven't wasted much time going through them. Okay then, so really what we're in position to do is start getting some paint on this. Obviously you could spray the engine as a whole, what I'm going to do is put a very large amount of blue tag just in the end here, I'm going to push all these bits onto it um, and leave it and then afterwards take it all apart and then once they're apart we can actually put it the engine in and put them all back together but it will just save us getting overspray over the engine and I really don't want that at the moment. Cockpit as well we've got a choice do we want to put the glass on now mask it up and do it or do we want to do it as a separate to be honest it's such a nice fit you don't have to worry about filler and things like that so I'm going to do it as an afterthought I'm going to put them on afterwards so for the moment I'm going to carefully mask up this entire area we can paint the entire model and then unmask it. I can attach the seat belt to put the pilot figure in if we're going to do it that way. Um, have it open or closed, whichever way we're going to want it. But it will give us a lot more options to do that afterwards. Same with the tail. Obviously, we're going to leave the rudder on, but the tail planes are going to leave off just for spraying. So it will just make it a bit easier spraying this area um, for up and down areas around there. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to clear everything out of the way, start getting this masked up, and we get some prime on. <coughs> So being happy with all this is, with the cowlings in the front and all the rest of it, um, you can take your chance of obviously putting it all together and painting it, or you can do like I do. I'm going to remove the engine. I'm going to keep that nice out of the way over here and keep that all safe. And what we can do, we can paint all these parts as separate and pop them all together um, and we can do them all afterwards. Or I can bump what I'm going to show you in a moment. Let's put a large amount of blue tack in the front here and then we're going to build the engine all around it and then spray it all up so it looks like one. Then we can take it all apart once we're finished for final assembly. So, other bits and pieces really we can think about doing now if you wanted to. You could install the flaps and there again if you wanted to spray them um, as a separate or beforehand. But what we're doing, we're really going around checking all the seams and things like that. Um, but really what we're to the stage now, we can make the choice if we want to put the clear parts on. Um, paint them up, glue them in position, but there again, they're a fantastic fit. So what I'm actually going to do is mask this up um, very, very carefully. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to get this gun barrel, uh, sorry, the gun sight off uh, by giving it a bit of a wiggle to get that out. And then hopefully, what will happen is it will protect it all by using some blue tag or in. Okay, and then we're going to pop the needle back in as well because what we need to do is stop it from going forward, so we can actually work it. So what we're going to do, we're just going to take a pipette, suck up some neat thinners, pop it in the end, okay, and we're going to see if it comes through. And obviously at the moment you can see we're getting bubbles and that's because it can't get out the end. So what's happening is it's coming back up the only way it knows. So what we need to do is just pull the needle out, okay, and just push it up and down just a little bit. And hopefully it'll just start things moving which it is, we've stopped it coming back up and now it's flowing through, but obviously it is still completely baked in inside there. So what we do, we just whip the needle out, but what we've actually done, we've cleared a hole in the end here, and that has now got thinners floating in it, which will start softening it up quite nicely. So in again, we just come in with some thinners, a bit of thinners in there, cotton bud again, Okay, and that's it. We're just going to give it a wipe round. Now, the reason for not getting in here with something like a hard brush is because we don't want bits, if we can help it, um, big flaky bits getting down into the working parts. By using thinners, 
it's actually melting it, sticks it all to it, and as you can see, we go nice and green. And we can just carry on soaking that off. Now, I know what you're thinking, there's thinners now coming back up and in here, but to be honest, that's not a bad thing because I hopefully will clear all those out in a moment. So we get all that clean. And now this little chamber at the top here, it's totally clean. We can go down and do the end here. And then what we're gonna do, Okay, so that's the main parts done. Obviously, we've got to do all the cowlings and the things like that, so we'll get them all sprayed up, and then we can have a look at those seams. <coughs> okay, so we've put some, um, basically sanded out these little ones around the front that you can probably see here. We've done one just along here, and we're quite happy that those will go in afterwards. Big mistake, though, trying it a little bit too early, put a whacking great thumbprint right in here as I was holding it and it is still soft. So what we're gonna to have to do um, is let this totally dry off, sand that back and then reprime the entire thing, which we're gonna to have to do anyway, but there's a couple of fingerprints on here. So here's the lesson, don't go around touching these before they're totally dry or you are gonna end up putting in big fingerprints and then they're a nightmare to get rid of, even with acrylics, because obviously I was holding it quite firm to sand these. Heat off the thumb has warmed up the paint, softened it slightly, left a thumbprint and obviously if we used to leave that in there now, that'll be in there forever. And there's no point trying to sand it off now because it's soft, it'll just end up ripping it out and things like that. So we need it to sand back. So what we're gonna do is let this dry off totally for about half an hour and then we can come back, sand those off, reprime and we can get on with some pre-shade. Okay, so we've done those uh, seams at the front and we're all dry this time. Um, and as you see, very, very nice, no problem at all. They've all totally gone. Only took a little bit of sanding to take care of, but it's well worth doing those because these little seams at the front can be really annoying. If you, if you see them um, on a model, Fantastic finish and then you look cosy and you've got them and they're one of those ones that really stand out So it's nice to take care of those and it's just knowing that it's done now Obviously, we've got all the parts around here now. We've checked it over. We've checked all the seams We've looked at riveting panel lining joins um, We've looked for fingerprints anything that's going to spoil our finish um, for actually when we move on and obviously underneath here it's quite complex all the bits and pieces but uh, we're all happy of how it all is so making sure all those seams are all nicely gone now what we can actually do is move on with a little bit of pre-shading now with pre-shading what we're trying to do is get an effect it's not actually something that you're going to see um, it's a, an overall effect it's basically a way of making a shadowing pattern along the panel lines um, that give it a little bit of depth and a little bit of three-dimensional um, type of paintwork to this now if you follow my work before you'll know that this is something that I talk about of tonal difference and changing the shades and the reason I sort of bang on about it so much is I think it gives a nice authentic look to your actual your model by giving it just a couple of coats of paint very sort of um, two dimensional they tend to look a little bit plasticky die cast by giving them a little bit of depth i.e with pre-shading with um, lightning panels afterwards and that it just gives it an overall sort of different shade so what you might end up with is perhaps 40 or 50 different types of paint color on a model and that's the type of thing we're trying to do we're trying to give it a lot of depth and a lot of feel and what that will do is give it what I call the weighted look it makes the model look heavy authentic in scale and things like that so one of the early ways to do this is to actually pre-shade now, um, a lot have been written about pre-shading. You can either do it with um, gray paints, um, brown paints I know people do, and things like that. Personally, I'm quite old fashioned when it comes to this, and I literally will just go in, the compressor on, um, I will just go in with normal standard flat black over the actual model. So you've got your primer on, you know it's gonna give something to grip to, so what we can actually do, come in with our thinners. So what we're doing here, we're doing a, not tons of paint going in here because we don't actually need it but we're doing less than about um, a 50 50 mix of paint to start with for larger panel lines and then as we move down what we can do is add a little bit of thinner to this so do the little smaller riveting type details and things like that with all these things it's really important to have a good mix of your paintwork to make sure it's actually in there very nice so what we can do we can start off with bigger panel lines just move these out of the way um, and then we can move on then to the smaller ones and just thin it down a little bit more lower the air pressure now the air pressure is quite high at the moment it's about 30 psi 
and if I just start on the bottom here, you can follow me through as we go. So what we're going to do is pick out the big panel lines. And why I say big panel lines, I mean things like around flaps, um, ailerons, uh, tailplanes, rudders, things like that are going to be big areas because that's where it's going to pick up a lot of dirt. Smaller areas, obviously riveting especially, uh, minor panel lines, things like that, obviously aren't going to pick up quite as much dirt and going to be a little bit thinner. So what we're going to do, we're just going to pick out some of the larger ones around the center area here. So we check our float, happy with it, okay? And then all we do is just pop it down, quite close, just like that, and that's it. And then what we do, we've got a large one that moves down the, the side here. And also a little tip, which I'll do, if you stick the wing down with a little bit of putty or hold it up, just underneath like that. What it does, it stops it rocking around as the air brushes, obviously the air's hitting it, the actual model moves and it'll stop that. So what we do, we're just gonna pop down this one here. Now you might notice it's not dead straight, it's not supposed to be. What we want is to be a natural wave because otherwise if it's, it's perfect lines everywhere, which is a grid, which is fantastic airbrushing, the trouble I find it is when you look at the overall model, it looks like a grid and it doesn't look sort of organic and like weathering obviously is heavier in areas, lighter in others, things like that. So what we're trying to do by this is just keep it all random, wavy, not as thick, you know, thicker lines, thinner lines, and it'll just give us a, a better overall effect. So we're just gonna pop down major panel lines at the moment just like this. So we're just picking out these ones around the gun areas. Because obviously they're going to be quite a lot there. And then we're just going to pick around this aileron. Just like that. And then obviously there's some little details on there. Then obviously hatches, so we're looking for hatches um, and things like that. So we've got these round ones all around here. So what we're going to do is colour these in. Instead of trying to do the outside of them, we'll give them an overall effect and just paint them in. And it'll give them a grimy, dirty look as if they picked up dirt and things like that. So we can go around here. Just like so. And then obviously we've got hatches rolling down. And, as well, and so forth. So I'll carry on now, do all the major panel lines and come back with you in a minute and show you how to do riveting. Okay, so there we go, that's all sprayed in. Obviously it's a bit more technical on the bottom than it is the top. Um, Basically, when you're going to be doing um, riveting and things like that, it's very hard to make it out if you're going to do multiple colours. Now, if you were just to be putting this on a modern aircraft that's just grey, I would appreciate all the riveting detail right now. And I'm going to do it a little bit on the front just to show you in this demonstration. But a lot of the time, if you're going to be doing multi-layered camouflage, i.e., you know, on this one, we've got the two, uh, the greys, bottom grey, top grey, and then obviously a green as well, the chances are you're going to lose it and it's best to come back and post um, shade it, which is something we'll cover a bit later on. So what we're going to do is we've thinned this down just a little bit more and it makes it just spray a little bit easier. And all we're going to do is lightly shadow the actual riveting detail like this. I'll just show you up here quite thickly because otherwise you won't see it anyway but we're just shading it in like so and then we can just come across and grid it in like so and it gives us our nice uh, where well, you can actually pick that up on the camera, but it gives us our nice sort of shaded effect. Now the thing is to say, if you come along with grey, you'll see it quite nicely. And also what we'll do is we'll pop along and we'll lightly blow in a little bit of a lighter shade in between, so the darker areas will look slightly darker and so on. But obviously for this part of purpose, on a multi-layer camouflage, there's not a lot of point actually doing this. And we just need to put these over on ones in whilst we see them. Just that one in there, and then obviously this one's already been done, but we'll give it a little bit more because it's near, it's going to pick up a lot of dirt. So there we go. So all we've got to do now is finish off is just put these colour these in a little bit just to darken them up. And we'll just pop in this side as well. There we go, that's taken care of those. So what we're going to do, let that totally dry off, and then we can come back then and put our first colours on. 
Okay, so that's all dry now and we're ready for painting. So what we've actually got, luckily Tamiya have brought out their colour range um, for actually doing this exact kit, which is quite nice of them. So it's a new range of colours, um, it's XF81, 82 and 83, which is basically the dark green REF colour the ocean grey um, RF colour. Now this ocean grey replaced uh, the brown colour, uh, if you like, in um, later uh, part of the war. The Spitfires changed from being sort of the duck egg uh, underside colour. Um, which is that sort of greeny grey um, and moved over to the grey scheme um, and brown. So then the underside colour is the 83 uh, which is like a medium sea grey which isn't a million miles away to be honest off from uh, XF19. It's just a little shade difference but those shades makes all the difference. Now for this one the only part we need to do as the extra bit will be the underside cowling. So what we've got is a little bit of blue tack so we just pop that on the bottom and we just pop a cocktail stick in the back for spraying this. So that just holds that and just makes it a lot easier for spraying. So we just pop that up there at the moment. And obviously the tailplanes, the rest of them, we're not going to need to tack. Um, oh, and obviously the actual air scoop as well, uh, which is going to go underneath. So what we did, good old shake with this. Because we're going over the pre-shading, we want it to show through. Now, an easy way to do this is to thin your paint a little bit more because, because you're thinning it, what you're actually doing um, is making it more opaque and a lot thinner, which means the actual blackness will show through. Exactly same again, we're going in with thinners first. So with this, we're gonna go uh, about a third of a color cup in thinners, and then we're probably just gonna top it up to half with paint like so. And we'll grab a cocktail stick and good old mix with this. And it's important to say, usual thing, that it has a good mix to help with the flow. So there we go, that's that. So we'll just turn on the compressor. Okay, so we'll start on a wing. So we'll check our flow. Happy with how that's coming out. Okay, and we're just gonna spray down. Usual thing, it's about 20 to 25 PSI. And we're gonna just put on coat. Now it's going on a little bit grainy and a little bit speckly. And what that's telling us is the paint is a little bit thick. So we're gonna add quite a bit more thinners to that. Get that to go through. Okay, and what we're going to do, we're going to blow out that excess paint so we come to the thin stuff. And what we're going to do slightly is higher the air pressure just a little bit up to about sort of 27 psi. Okay, and there we go, we're going to put this on, it's covering a lot better now. So we're just going to run up and spray the entire thing. Got a tiny drip underneath, so we just want to take care of that. Okay, <clears throat> so here we go. We're just going to spray this on, and we want it to almost lose that pre-shading. So we're not keeping to any particular patterns here. We're just laying this on quite heavy. start with and there we go and as we start to lose that pre-shading starting to disappear we stop and move off to somewhere else okay now we're just going to get in these intakes sides of the actual air scoops and just working our way round we've got a bit of a a splash happened then. So if you get a splash like this, don't panic. Come along with a tissue, just dab. Get all off. Very light brush. Okay, don't suddenly panic. Airbrush, clean off the bottom because the chances are it's run over the side. Okay, dry it off and then just what we're going to do is just pop back and just respray right over the top of that particular area. 
And there we go, we're taking care of that splash over. So there we go, so we're just gonna work our way around to the tail, down to the back. On like that, and as you might be able to see, it's slightly coming back. But we're not gonna take care of that for a moment. We're just gonna make sure we've done the leading edges of those wings. Just like that, okay. And we're just gonna pop him down out of the way and we're just gonna go off and do all the other bits. So we're just gonna do the air scoop. Straightforward spray like that. Then obviously we've got this bottom area. Just like so. Okay, and then obviously we've got the tail planes, just to make sure you get your, your upside downs correct. Just gonna lightly spray over these. There's one. And two. Okay, then what we're gonna do is pour most of it back in. Okay. <clears throat> Clean up the underside. More thinners in. Okay, so we've got basically there's like um, double it up to whatever you've got left in there. Okay. Back out with a mix. This will be a very thin, very, very wet mixture, but this will just help with the pre shading to show it all through. <clears throat> As you see, it's quite dirty underneath and what this will do it will give us a smoother finish for going on to. All we do is gonna spray this right the way over. There we go and that will just give us a nicer smoother finish because that one that went on before might be quite grainy. This one will just help it and just be a nicer finish. So we get a little bit foggy here. So we're just going to turn on the extractor. Redo this under sump one. We can tip the rest back in. Okay. Blow that out. And there we go. So that gives us, or hopefully you can see, a nice sort of worn, um, sort of pre-shaded, you can see it in there, pattern to that. So hopefully you can pick it up on the lights. And there we go. So obviously, you know, the other things you can do at the same time if you wanted to now, you can obviously do the inter the main wheel doors and the flaps and all the other little bits and pieces that are actually going to be the underside colour, the little fuel tank that goes on the bottom as well, just to tidy them up. Or you can do them afterwards, whichever way you want to do it.